Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, we're going to be talking about how to get your X32 multi track recording so that you can do virtual sound checks at your venue or church. If you're brand new to my channel, I am all about making you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, the Behringer X32 ships with the X USB expansion card, which is located on the back side of your console. Now, to get this to work, you will need a USB cable that can plug into the back of your console and then into your computer. So in this case, I have this USB-C to USB-B uh, that I'm gonna be using on the back of my console. So you're going to grab your USB cable and you're going to locate your expansion card, which is directly underneath the XLR outputs. And we can see that this is the X USB card. So we're gonna take this cable and we're gonna plug this into the USB here on this card. Make sure that you don't plug this into the remote control portion as that would not pass any audio. You want to be plugging into the expansion card itself. The next thing that you'll do is plug in the other end into your computer. Once you have everything plugged in, the next thing that we need to do is some configuration on the board. So we're going to press the setup button and tab all the way over until you get to card. And we want to make sure that this is configured in the 32 in, 32 out configuration. After you have that done, go ahead and hit the routing button and take a look as to how you have your routing set up on your X32. If you have everything coming in from AES50A, 1 through 32, then we will want to copy that to our card settings here on the fourth page. If you have everything from local, going here, then you want to copy that to your card setting. Say we also have a configuration where maybe we have a few stage boxes set up and some local inputs, then you'll want to copy this exactly to the card settings. So for instance, if we had local one through 16 and AES 50A one through 16, then we would want to copy that to our card. So we would simply page over to card, we'd make sure that we have local one through 16 and then AES 50A 1 through 16. Doing this will ensure that all of the inputs that you have plugged into your board also pass through to the expansion card for our multi-track recording. The next thing that we want to do is go back to our input tab, and we are going to take our sixth rotary knob to turn it to the right when this says play. And then what we'll do is we'll press this down. And then we need to make sure that all of our expansion card is selected for our playback section. If this is set to anything else, you'll want to rotate these until we are card 1 through 32. Once that's done, you'll want to rotate this back to record and press the rotary knob again to get back into our normal input settings. After that, we're going to jump over back to our computer so that we can get our digital audio workstation or DAW configured. I typically use a program called Reaper, which is a DAW that you can download from reaper.fm. They do have a full free trial that you can use, but it is a relatively inexpensive program. Now I'm gonna jump over to my computer to show you how to get that set up for our multi-track recording. So here we have Reaper, and I am going to open up our preferences and get our audio device set up to be from XUSB. So if you're on the general tab, you'll want to go down to audio device and set this to XUSB. Once you have that set, you'll press OK. So now this means that Reaper is now connected to the XUSB card of our X32. The next thing that you want to do is right click in this area over here and we're going to press insert multiple tracks. You're going to type in 32 for 32 tracks and then let's go ahead and type in X32 in and press OK. This is going to then number all of your tracks from one to 32. After you've done that, we're going to need to open up our routing matrix. So you're going to press view, go to routing matrix and then this is going to appear down here. So what you'll have to do is you'll need to grab this line right here, raise it up to be able to view more of this window. What we have is our inputs here and our outputs here. So this is where we're going to be pulling our inputs from. So this is my actual channels inside of Reaper and this is my actual inputs on the X32. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to line these up one to one for each of our channels. So one is gonna be coming from one, X32 input two is gonna come from input two. And so you're just going to click all the way down until you get to 32. 
The very next thing is we're going to set our outputs out of all of these tracks to be similar to what track is recorded. For instance, this X32 input one, we are recording from input one and we'll want to put that out back to the board on input one as well. So what we need to do is we need to actually remove this master output first. So you're going to right click and we're just going to press delete. Then the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to scroll over until we get to our mono outputs here. And then you're going to find our X32 input one and set that to out one. And you're going to run down this line for every single one. And if you accidentally click one in a different spot, you'll need to right click and delete that as we want to make sure that only one channel is going to one output. Once you've done this, we can go back up to view and hide our routing matrix. And then you'll want to grab this blue line to resize this window smaller so we can see all of our audio. Next, go ahead and click right here and select all by using Command A. And then you'll want to press the record arm button. After you have hit the record arm button, I like to save this as a project template. So we're going to go file project templates, save project as template. And we're simply going to call this X32 default. Once you've named it, you can press save. The beauty of saving this template here with all of these armed is if we close this project and we go to open up a new project on a different day, we can simply go back to our project templates, load our X32 default, and it will load with all of the tracks armed and ready for recording. The next thing that I like to do is just grab a XLR microphone and plug it into the console or have some of your band members start playing their instruments to just double check that I actually have audio going into the program. So I have this microphone, check, check, check. So I can see that it's on my console here and I can also see that it's on Reaper over there. Once you have this finished, you are ready for multi-track recording. And once your band starts playing, you can simply go over and hit the record button, and it will start recording all 32 channels that you have set up from your console going into Reaper. Now, when you are multi-track recording with this setup, none of the processing that you're doing on the channels is going to be affecting the audio that's going to our recorder. So that means that your low cut, your gate, your dynamics, your EQ, effects, plugins, any of that, none of it is going to be affecting the audio that's going into Reaper. It means that Reaper is going to be taking the audio directly off of the input right after the preamp. So the only thing that will affect the audio going into Reaper is your input gain that you have set here. If you are clipping your console here, you are going to be clipping Reaper inside of your DAW. Once you're finished recording, you can simply go and press the stop button here and then you'll want to save all. So that concludes the video on actually how to record multi-track into your computer. Now, if you are using a PC or a Windows-based machine, you will need to install the audio drivers for the particular sound card that you're using on the X32. For instance, if you have the XUSB, you will need to install the XUSB drivers on your PC. If you have the XUF or the XLive card, then you'll need to install the corresponding drivers to those cards on your Windows machine as well. In my next video, I'm going to show you actually how to get this audio to play back into the console for a virtual sound check. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. If you do happen to have any questions on either this video or anything else, feel free to post something in the comments below, as I'm always looking through the comment section for the next video that's going to be helpful for you. Also, make sure to check out drewbrashler.com for more articles and information on the Behringer X32. Thank you so much.